All right, hello and welcome back to another Weeb Nerfing video. Today's video, we're gonna be doing an NBA tier list maker, in particular, NBA duos. Now, there's a lot of great duos currently in the NBA, and I thought I would do a tier list, you know, ranking them to see kind of who has the best duos in the league. That doesn't necessarily mean that team is the most successful, but it means that those two pieces are not the problem. They are elite pieces and or average and or who knows what, depending on what duos we talk about. But it has been a good NBA season thus far, so let's look at some of the best duos. Our tiers here are pretty simple. S, A, B, C, D, it's what we always do to be honest. But anyway, let's get a good look at some of these duos. There's a lot of good names on here. There is a lot of not so great names on here. But anyway, let's get a look at our first duo. We have Jalen, sorry, Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey. Now I know what some of you are gonna be thinking, that is S or A. In my opinion, as of right now, hold up, let me, Grammarly, not right now. Anyway, Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, my reason for them being B and not any higher is because they haven't proven anything in the playoffs just yet. In terms of a regular season duo, yeah, dude, they're freaking awesome. Maybe A, that's a bit too high, but regular season, yes. A tier, absolutely. But we haven't seen them in the playoffs. And I think that's the most important thing with these duos is can they get a championship? Can they compete for one? These two in the regular season, we know are obviously killing it. Seasons past, you know, James Harden was there, but Tyrese Maxey has always been good. It's just about the playoffs though. That's what defines your legacy in the NBA. You can't just be regular season heavy and then in the playoffs not show up. There was a lot of uncertainty in the playoffs right now with these two. So we'll get there in the end of the year the end of the season and maybe you know they could be higher they could be the same but right now they're regular season merchants because there's been no results in the playoffs thus far julius randall and jalen brunson in my opinion are for sure beats here right now we know that they can get it done on a team uh fiending for a fourth fifth seed but there's extreme uncertainty surrounding the fact that in the playoffs they're good enough i don't think they're a championship champ championship team yet thus far you might have to build more pieces around him obviously adding og and anobi is a big help but those two alone i mean granted any two alone isn't enough to get it done but these two as a duo are not some of the aren't on the list of the top duos in the league to say the least i would still say joel Embiid and tyrese maxi as a duo are better than julius randall and jalen brunson as good as these two are it's just it seems like they're fourth, fifth seed bound almost every season. Obviously, again, adding OG and Anobi, maybe they could be feeding for that third seed, but I don't think they're gonna compete a championship with just them as the best players. Next up, we got Macau Bridges and Cam Thomas. Uh, honestly, no, this is not a good duo. Uh, as you can see, what what is their record right now? Let me actually just pull that up because I don't wanna be talking out of my ass, but I know it's not great. They're 16 and 21. Cam Thomas isn't a great playmaker. He's a great scorer, not a good defender at all. The Cal Bridges, little streaky, solid scorer, really good defender. Uh, but as a duo, these two are not gonna get, well, they're already not getting anything done. They're 16 and 21. Uh, yes, you could say that they need more help with their team building, but, or roster construction, I should just say, but these two aren't gonna be the answer to any long-term questions. Next up, we got Scotty Barnes and Pascal Siakam. I think they're definitely a tier above McCall and Cam, but I mean, what's their record as well? It's not It's not great, 15 and 22. They're actually worse in terms of record than the Nets, but you know, Scotty Barnes has taken a leap this season, being able to do much more. He's been able to be more efficient Pascal Siakam, he's been good for a while now, but these two guys, these two guys aren't gonna bring a championship to the Raptors anytime soon. In fact, Pascal Siakam will probably be getting traded. So there's that. It shows Kristaps Porzingis, but in reality, this is Jalen Brown. They are an A-tier duo without question. You could argue S, but they haven't delivered a championship, so I wouldn't go that far. But Jason Tatum, and again, it shows Kristaps, but it should be Jalen Brown. Uh, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are just elite. Very, very elite duo from offense to defense. Just both facets of the game. They're able to do both really, really, really well. Uh, the Celtics seem to follow their lead. And yeah, that, that team is really good for a reason. First seed in the East for a reason, 28 and eight. Just a really good team. 
led by the two best players in Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Paulo and Franz Wagner is an interesting one because they're not as good as, you know, Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson, but they're young and they're promising. And honestly, Paulo is is getting there. So this pretty soon in a year or two could be higher for sure. But just for right now, I don't think they're as good as Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson. You could definitely say, hey, you should still put them in B tier. But again, really young. You don't know what you're going to get in some crucial moments. Right now, they're 21 and 16, which is solid, right? But you just don't know what you're going to get, especially come playoffs. Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, in my opinion, are definitely B tier. Uh, you could say, hey, why aren't they A? Their team made the championship. I think it's more so of a product of the team as opposed to just the duo. The Miami Heat are interesting in that they're a well-coached team. They have that Heat culture going for them. Yes, Jimmy Butler, isolation as, like, just if you take Jimmy Butler as a player himself, he's obviously really good. Same with Bam Adebayo. But that team is not a product of this duo. That team is a product of a whole team effort. You could say it about every team, but I think it's more so emphasized with the Miami Heat. So I will say B tier for specifically Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo as a duo. You know, Trey Young and DeJuante Murray is an interesting one because when the two, you know, when DeJuante joined Trey Young on the Atlanta Hawks, I thought, wow, okay, that could be decent. But it has proven not to be. They don't really play off each other too well. Uh, DeJuante Murray is probably going to get traded based off of what we've seen from the rumor mill. And... You know, as as players themselves, they're really, really good. Trey Young as a player himself is really good. DeJuante as a player himself is solid, like really solid. You know, definitely borderline all-star, but he's not there. Uh, but as a duo, it's just not enough at all. Next up, we got LaMelo and Scary Terry. Um, you could argue this. Uh, my reason being for even considering them in C is because LaMelo is just that fucking good. I think LaMelo is one of the more underrated players in the NBA, which is saying a lot because people know he's good, but I don't think people realize how good he is, but he just happens to be on the Hornets, who are a team that has been bad for a long time now. But LaMelo Ball is really, really, really good, and it's not talked about enough. Grants, he is injured, you know, more so than Hornets fans would like him to be, but in the future, I'm curious as to, be, as to who will be his second guy. Will it be Brandon Miller? Will Brandon Miller emerge? Or will it be someone else? Because they're going to hit the lottery again this year. Kyle Kuzma, Jordan Poole is probably the worst duo in the league, if you can even call them that. But they're on this list, so I'm going to rank them. And it's, no, not a good duo. It's not Kyle Kuzma's fault. But Jordan Poole is is just proven to not be an efficient player. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Damian Lillard. I think this, is, this one's interesting because you could definitely call them an S-tier duo. But I don't think they figured out perfectly how to play with each other just yet. I think there's still room to improve. I would definitely call them an S tier duo for sure. I just don't think they've been playing like it yet, if that makes sense. I know their record is 25 and 12, but just watching them play, it seems like there's still more chemistry that can be added to the mix. With Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, you could argue S tier, but I think that Jalen Brown's not a superstar. I think that Giannis and Dame are both superstars. So that's why I would say S tier. Jason Tatum for sure is a superstar, but I would say Jalen Brown is an all-star, not a superstar. Kobe White and DeMar DeRozan is pretty simple. Uh, both really solid scorers. Kobe White definitely took the next step, but this should be Zach Levine, not Kobe White. Uh, Zach Levine is definitely better than Kobe White. Granted, he, Zach Levine has been injured and he's not you know, projected to get traded, but still it, it should be that should be Zach Levine, but definitely C tier no matter what, to be honest with you. They're not producing enough results. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton, Miles Turner. See, Tyrese Halliburton's an A tier, S tier. No, 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 no. He's an A tier kind of player, but Miles Turner isn't. But as a duo, they work better than a lot of these other guys. Honestly, I would say, I would say, let me, let me put this here. Hold up. Let me almost done okay so yeah i would say they're the highest of seeds here it's not a slight towards tyrese it's just that miles turner isn't even an all-star it's just that as a deal they really complement each other very well because tyrese maxi uh, sorry tyrese halliburton really does a great job of feeding him getting him into open spots getting him open looks sometimes borderline spoon feeding him uh, as a deal they do work 
but Miles Turner could be better. And if he was, this duo ranking would be significantly higher. Cade Cunningham and, and uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich. Uh, yeah, this duo is the second worst duo in, in in this shit. I mean, you could argue these two are better in terms of a duo, but I think it's the Pistons roster that just sucks more than the Wizards roster. They're both bad though. But Cade Cunningham, of these four players, you could argue is the best, but I would say still Kyle Kuzma. But Cade Cunningham has, without question, the most potential, most up most upside this is his second legitimate season he didn't he didn't have a sophomore year last year really because he got hurt like after a game or two or some something really quick Bogdan isn't that good but he's better than Jordan Poole so I would leave this at D but not the worst duo you know we got Donovan Mitchell and Evan Mobley listed on here it should be Darius Garland I would say Darius Garland is that second guy but nevertheless I would say assuming that this is Darius Garland I would say B tier not as good as Julius Randle or Jalen Brunson for sure, but they, they are still a solid duo. Uh, Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell complement each other very well. Darius Garland loves to facilitate. Donovan Mitchell loves to score. So it definitely works out. They need more surrounding pieces though, which is why I would stay at B tier. KD and D book, uh, as individual players, they're just flat out superstars. As a duo that Suns have not had success, I wouldn't pin it on these two. Um, this is an interesting one to rank because you could argue KD and Devin Book are still S tier duo. Mm, yeah, I, I'm gonna put them in S tier as a duo still because Devin Booker's a superstar, Kevin Durant's a superstar. It's not their fault that their team has the roster construction that it has. I don't know, man. It's like the success hasn't translated from their individual games or games as a duo. You know what I mean? Because their record is still shoddy as hell. But I feel like I have to. I, I genuinely feel obligated to put them at S tier because they are both superstars. Both really good. But to be honest, you could argue Jason, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are a better duo. But let me put it this way. If KD and D-Book went to the Celtics with that team... I think the Celtics would be fucking lethal still. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things that it's really tough. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to say they're A tier. I want I, I, I wanted to say S tier. I really did. But it just hasn't translated to wins yet, dude. So I'm going to say A tier. KD D book. You could you could definitely say this. You could definitely say this 100%. Mm, you know what? You know what? This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. I feel better with this. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. I, no, I don't. I don't feel better about that. Fuck. Okay. I'm going to leave it like this, but I'm really uncertain about this. You could say A tier, S tier for, for D-Book KD. That one's really tough to rank. AD and LeBron, without question. I mean, dude. <laughs> AD and Braun are easily S tier. They already want to chip together. There's... There is just nothing to be said. Th those two are really good. And I know with the KD and D book dilemma, you know, I say it's not translating to wins. And with AD and, and LeBron, you know, they're they're not winning the most. I'm going to pull up their record. I don't know it off the top of my head, even though I'm a Laker fan, I know. Uh, 19 and 19. It's just uh, poor coaching, terrible utilization of rotations. Uh, but we know that this duo can win a championship together, and their play hasn't fallen off since the bubble. I mean, you could say AD, you know, lost his jumper a lot more, but dude, they're both superstars, amazing, amazing players, and like I said, they have won a championship together. Their play has not fallen off, so I would say, I would say definitely S tier. Um, I'm a, I'm a little unsure of KD and D book though, what to do with them. Uh, it hasn't translated to anything. They haven't even won a championship together in the past. Granted, it is new, but we know what we're getting from these two. Just absolute monster performances. I don't know what I'm getting with these two because there hasn't been any success yet. Individually, they're fucking amazing. Without question. Decisions, decisions. But I will leave that to part two. Yes, there will be two parts to this video because I have a lot more to go. I don't want to make this video overly long because then people get disinterested. They start to skip. And I'd rather keep this 
where I can elaborate and analyze as much as I want. And also, I want to hear from your guys' feedback on just part one. What you think of this now? I am not set in stone on these rankings just yet. You know, part two, we'll get to that and we'll do more. But anyway, let me know what you guys think so far and what are your personal favorite duos? What are your best duos? As always, I appreciate you guys for watching. This is Ollie Been Different. Ollie Been Different. And we out.